Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about docker volume mapping and port mapping. Okay, so we have seen how we are creating containers either Node.js container, Redis, MySQL, Mongo. Creating container is very easy. You just pull the image and just do docker run container name, docker run image name. It will create a container. But some containers are like stateless where you are not storing anything. You are just creating them and destroying them. But some containers where you need to actually store the state of the data. There you need to have a volume mapping applied. What volume mapping will do is it, it will actually map the data for your container on the host operating system. Okay. And another term is a port mapping. You can, you know already that container I are actually isolated space, right? Now how your container will be able to talk to your host operating system. You are actually running uh, Redis, right? You are running the MongoDB MySQL. How can I access that Redis MongoDB MySQL, which is running inside a container? You have to expose that service through some port, right? Like MySQL 3306, MongoDB 27017, Redis 6379 or something. Okay. And engine export 80. You have to expose these services to the outside world so that we can access it, right? So that is called port mapping port mapping of host port to the container port okay it is we are talking about containers are stateless means no storage but how we can actually how we can manage the content of a container inside our host operating system right so there are two ways either you do the volume mounting or uh, mount 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 bind okay so docker is providing two different options for container to store files in the host machine Okay, because here we are talking about how we can store the data of a container on the host so that the files are persisted even after the container stop or container dies, right? Even if the container is coming up and if you are using the same volume, then it will get the data from the same volume location. Okay, so volumes and bind mounts are actually two options which we can use. Volume are in stored, in the, stored in a separate part of host file system and which is managed by Docker, right? This is kind of set of volumes which are getting created. You can create a volume using docker volume create the, the commands which we have seen. Okay, here we will talk about volume mapping and port mapping. So volume we understood that we need some data to be stored for container. Okay, let's do create a volume and map it with the container. Okay, another thing we will talk about is port mapping. Okay, both are kind of similar concept. Port mapping is mapping the port between host to container. Volume mapping is mapping the volume from host to container. Okay, so how to create a volume? Docker volume create and volume name. You can just list all the existing volumes and you can prune the volumes. If you wanted to remove all the, uh, the shared space occupied by containers. Okay. Here, this is the basic example that will help you to understand the volume mapping and port mapping. Here, I wanted to run Jenkins on my system. Okay, so what I'm doing is docker run. I just uh, give us some specific name to that container, which is Jenkins, my Jenkins or whatever it is. Now I'm passing two argument, uh, minus V and minus P. So minus V is saying that the volume label is actually mapped to this container volume right so this volume will be created on your host system and this is actually mapped to this jenkins home home of container wall container directory okay so this is represented by your host and this is represented by your container similarly dash p i mean i'm doing a two different kind of port mapping because one i need for apis jenkins apis and one i need for just hosting the jenkins okay 8181 this is some this need to be some port which is free on your host and this is on container because container can have any number of port container are isolated so you can actually provide the same port to all the containers they will not conflict because all the containers are independent they are exposing 3000 port now you can decide which port you wanted to bind with host so 8181 is your host port it is mapped with 8080 container port I have a two port mappings and Jenkins is actually image name which I'm running. Okay, so now let's try to just uh, see what this command is giving the name to the container. This is how I'm doing a volume mapping. 
volume of my base machine that is attaching to this particular volume of container. This is volume mapping, this is host and this is the container map. 8181 is the port of uh, docker host, I mean on which you are running the docker engine and 8080 is actually docker container port. Okay, similarly the next one. So port mapping is kind of a same concept, we actually use minus D, so there are different arguments we pass. Docker run minus P is for port mapping, minus V for volume mapping, minus V, minus D for running containers in the detached mode. Okay. So this is how we actually do the port mapping in some of the practical sessions like uh, I will talk about it. So like you have created Nginx. Nginx container I think we already have Docker PS minus A. So we are running uh, this particular container. I will just prune all these containers. Okay. Docker container prune it is. Sorry. So I, let me just see what all containers we have. We don't have anything, right? Now, docker run. So we first will see what image we have. Docker images, sorry. So here we can see that Nginx image is there, right? Docker run. Now if I just try to run this image, you can actually run the image ID. It will just run the Nginx, but it will, it will not actually launch the nginx because we are not doing volume mounting and port mount port mapping volume mapping is not necessary for in this particular case we are not creating any we are not deploying any stuff to this nginx web server so at least what we can do is port mapping 8080 of my port is actually mapped to the 80 of my container and i wanted to run in this detached mode so what it is doing is it is actually running the container I used to say this 80 we can see this page right so is it a magic no right what we did is host port 8080 is actually mapped to the port 80 of the container this is the container so this is the image we are running this image so it will become a container and we get this container id you can see docker ps and now here we will understand it more the docker ps minus a here you can see this nginx container is running and you can see the mapping this is your host it is actually mapped to this container port 80 right docker inspect or let me just try to show you something from the docker dashboard like because it's a container so it also gets the individual ip and uh, it is doing the port mapping from 8080 to 80 so we are able to access this currently we are running this container if we inspect this this is the port mapping if you can see this and this is the path, this is the states, these are the logs we have. So these are the Nginx logs if you are exposing them. Okay. So this is how we actually do the port mapping and volume mapping. This is the simple example of port mapping. And once you destroy this particular volume, all of this port my binding and all will be destroyed. Okay. So how we for the local development where you have a different containers node, mysql, mongo, rabbitmq we will be using docker compose to spin up all these different containers to do the volume mounting, port ma mapping uh, all these things in the docker compose configuration itself if we just uh, because this is a particular container it is also getting a particular ip assigned to it and we are able to talk to this container from the host because port mapping is done this is exposing port 80 and we can enter into it okay uh, that's it about mapping. In the next video, we will talk more about Docker.